Hello everybody, welcome to another AFK Journey video. Today what we are going to be doing is we are going to be watching the Journey Unfolds uh, Strong Song of Strife season uh, video. It's 15 minutes long, it's from the actual AFK Journey page, so it's going to have a lot more information. It's going to be a little bit more, it's going to be a lot more than the trailer, and we're going to actually get to see what the characters do, you know, what the mechanics are of the new season and everything like that. Probably going to be a bit of a deep dive, so that's probably what I'm going to call this video. Let's get into it. The journey of Merlin and companions continues. They came a long way and finally discovered a new continent seldom stepped upon by outsiders. Ashen Wastes. Wow! Ashen Wastes is a barren wasteland this place where does not a cool. blade of grass grows. Well, that sucks. Resources are scarce. I see blades of the grass though. Is harsh and deadly threats lurk everywhere. These desolate sands were once a flourishing civilization, now lost to centuries of fighting. Oh my goodness. Here, Merlin encounters some new characters from Malu, Alsa and Soren. Together, wow. they face the trials of the War Song Festival okay. and risk right. their lives to investigate the sinister plots of the Adamant Syndicate. <clears throat> risk their lives to investigate the sinister plots of the what, Adamant Syndicate. What was that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Damn, I love AFK Journey. Syndicate. But Merlin Season's looking good. <laughs> More of that. Still a mystery. Can he find new clues on this new continent? You tell me. You tell me. Hello, your most familiar dolly from Noble Tavern is here. Hi. Hear me out. The brand new season, Song of Strife is about to unfold. I've heard quite a bit of news at the tavern and I'd love to share it with you all today. Drinks and snacks are getting prepared and they'll be served on your table in just a while. Before that, let me share the news I've gathered. Magister Merlin is arriving at a whole new continent, Ashen Wastes, meeting new companions, Alsa and Soren. In the Song of Strife season, they'll mm -hmm. go through the unprecedented trial of the War Song Festival to prove. Her gameplay looks really, really cool. I'm sure they're gonna actually like show the gameplay and everything, and do a bit of a, you know, dive in on that and all of her abilities. Um, Soren, he looks alright. Uh, yeah, this is this is giving me a lot of feelings where like um. The the tavern keeper is Albert, or is that the main character talking to us? I think it's the tavern keeper. Uh, Albert from uh, the Honkai Star Rail special program videos whenever they do like deep dives on what's coming in their next patches. Uh, this is pretty much what that reminds me of. So Prove their this is going to be pretty good. Ashen Waste is the most expansive desert I've ever heard of. The sun sears everything, yet unyielding life continues to thrive here, forming tribes, creating connections. This place does look really nice. Thriving with a variety of interesting cultures. The Warsong Festival takes place every 10 years at the Sunseek Arena. Participants coming from different tribes. Everyone undergoes multiple trials, all striving for victory. In the Legend of Dusk Lord, the champion of the Warsong Festival is known as Ultimate Honor. The ultimate glory a tribe could win. Most importantly, who's joining and changing Magister Merlin's journey are Alsa and Soren. Allow me, Dolly, to introduce to everyone these two younglings from Uru Clan. Yes. Let's start with Alsa, the enthusiastic girl. Let's. Alsa is an orphan, but she never blames others for what she went through. She's oh, wow. She's cheerful and helpful, a rock type mage with a strong. Enters combat stand skin, gaining enhanced flexibility and dealing damage and dodging attack. Sense of justice. 
Okay. Elsa's skill, Stone Barrier, summons the power of the earth to damage wow, that's just her skill. her target for a set period of time. Beyond that, a multi-tile rock pillar will form behind the target, which can block enemy attacks. Enemies originally located at the tile of the rock pillar will be knocked back. Multiple pillars can exist at the same time, but in limited numbers and can be destroyed. In uh -huh. such a hazardous environment, it's not always the best to strike first. Sometimes it's smarter to stay alive and retreat. And Elsa understands just that. When she releases her ultimate skill, Twirling Rocks, cool. Elsa will move to the target location and cause damage to enemies within range. Then she will enter the combat stance during which Elsa will have two new abilities. Okay. First, she curls up into a ball, quickly strikes the target to cause stun, and then bounces back to her original position. Once she acquires That's her cool. exclusive skill, Dawn of Terra, the more she rolls in the combat stance state, the stronger the subsequent impact, and the more she avoids damage. Secondly, when Elsa herself receives a high amount of damage within a range, she curls up again and hides far away. Each curl up will consume cool. energy, but when she recovers, she will So she just does a lot of kiting very, very naturally. Just by being in her uh, enhanced combat state that she gets from her ult. That's really cool. Extra shields. Elsa's other skill, Repel Sweep, can perfectly complement these two control type skills. She senses the vibration of the earth. Okay. Also deals damage to people who have recently been affected by crowd control effects, is what that said. Finding all that have been controlled recently. She'll then create falling rocks above their heads to cause damage. Cool. This makes her a control type mage who can create terrains. Now, how about her brother? Alsa's brother, on the other hand, is called Soren. Soren grew up alongside Alsa and is always there to protect her when needed. Even though Soren appears cold, he's exceptionally kind to his own people. He aspires to become the strongest. What you mean by that? He's cold, but nice to his own people. What you mean by that? All right, everybody. Get on Twitter. We're canceling Soren to protect. We're doing it. Soren's skill, Repel Sweep, gives him the ability to seize opportunities and locate enemies close to his allies okay. or which are being obstructed by terrain. He then deals damage to them with an enhanced mm. basic attack that also knocks back. If the target right. hits any characters, terrain, or stage borders during knockback, stun them. it will receive extra damage and a stun. Oh, and cool. Elsa could create terrains. Don't they complement each other perfectly? Oh my god! Besides Repel Sweep, Soren's ultimate skill, Whirlwind Swing, also has a similar effect. He selects a tile on the map, leaps, and quickly smashes down, causing damage and a knockback to enemies within range. Cool. Similarly, if the target hits any characters, terrain, or stage borders during knockback, extra damage and a stun will apply. These two are going to be a crazy duo to put into the, um, when you're doing the Mahler Tower. This is going to be crazy. Soren is very well prepared, practicing for years for the day to protect Uru Clan. He never doubted moving forward on the path of becoming an undefeated warrior because his... Crusation recovers HP and energy when HP is low. Other okay. Other two skills provide him with additional effects. When Soren receives a single attack damage that exceeds 10% of his maximum health, his skill deflecting swing will reduce damage from this attack by 70%. Wow. It will also trigger repel sweep once. This so you can't no really burst this guy. Time of repel sweep itself. Finally, his exclusive skill is dusk rejuvenation. When his health I must say this character does definitely seem like one of the much stronger four stars in the game, um, especially if you have Alsa. So I would honestly suggest people probably go for him. Just because of this kit, it seems like it is, he's very, he's self-sustaining. Um, and he has a lot of CC and AOE. And that is a combo that is just, it's going to be good. In a game like this, it is going to be good. 
as long as his numbers are at least half decent, it is going to be a good thing. Falls below 50%, the skill activates a mysterious power that strengthens dust. Yeah, look at this. Increasing his speed and lasting for a set period of time. This is insane self-sustain. When he goes below 50%, he, re he quickly regenerates health. He gets more haste. And what else was it? Like, more attack speed? It literally said it whenever they, uh, covered it. Because his other Increased haste recovers HP and energy. That's pretty crazy. And lasting for a set period of time. Well, no one would have thought that young-looking Soren would have such great power. Let's hope that in this journey, Alsa and Soren can realize their dreams. They've been preparing for this for years. Yep. I wish the redemption codes had a little bit more. A little bit more to them. In Honkai Star Rail, when you get a redemption code, it's 300 gems. Or 300 jades. So, that is literally like a full... It, it's at least one entire pull. But, whenever we get you know, gems and AFK journey, it's like a hundred. So that's a third of a pull. So it, it that's kind of rough. In the new Song of Strife season, Magister Merlin, along with Alsa and Soren, will challenge the trials to obtain... Wait, no. In Honkai Star Rail, the pulls cost 160. So getting 300 gems like we do, or getting 300 jades like we do, it's literally almost two full pulls. When an AFK journey, it's one third. Yeah. Wow. Ultimate honor. This is the highest honor of the Warsong Festival. Throughout the journey, they will encounter interesting treasures and new monsters across Hesperia. This mm -hmm. new game mode is called Bestial Brawl. In this newly discovered land, there exists Iron Jaws, an intriguing monster that resides in specific territory and guards it without mercy. Bestial Brawl is one of the main new puzzle mechanics of the new season. When Magister Merlin enters the territory oh of God. Iron Jaws, they launch an attack. These monsters don't attack with the regular 5v5 combat forms. Instead, they push away the intruder until they're expelled from the territory. That's pretty cool. To obtain the treasures here, Magister Merlin needs to find ways to evade Iron Jaws. It could even be advised to crush obstacles for hidden treasures. However, as the saying goes, the most dangerous place is the safest. And the safest place is the best hideout for shiny treasures. True. Let's look at the brand new Treasure Quest gameplay. All you need to do is have a chat with treasure hamsters across the wilds and in some towns and start treasure hunting. For that, you'll need this new item, Loot Detector. By placing loot detectors at various places, you can discover the general direction of hidden treasures. However, the range and distance that loot detectors can reveal is limited, and only a fixed number of detectors can exist in the area. So make good use of them. In addition to Bestial Brawl That's cool. and Treasure Quest, the new season also introduces a special mechanic, Raging Duel. Here, both parties have a value called Raid. By triggering specific conditions, they can accumulate Rage, which, when full, provides the entire team with a large amount of buffs until the battle ends. Raging uh, Duel uh. is a special mechanism that can be experienced in some levels, but not all battles. So pay extra attention when they're triggered. This new journey is so uh -huh. rich in experiences. But I That's pretty cool. It's like a new combat mode. Like some of them are defend the crystals. Some of them are like uh, do a puzzle. Some of them are an elite battle or something like that. And then there's the solo trials. So now I guess there's those. The uh, epic duels or whatever they, she just called it. I've heard of more than That's pretty cool. With the arrival of the new season, heroes will be able to become stronger in new ways to meet new challenges. I would like to introduce to you the all-new Magic Charms. Magic Charms are seasonal, so let's say if they're obtained in the Song of Strife season, they'll be effective for, and only for, this season. Each hero can equip three charms, 
each of which can provide extra bonus stats. Uh -huh. Each charm can be identified as one of these five qualities. Rare, elite, epic, legendary, or mythic. Wow, look at these charms. They shine through your soul, don't they? Wow! Moreover, if you collect the same or higher quality charms... So I guess that's per character, too? You can activate the hero... Yeah, okay, so it's per... It's per character. Seasonal prowess. The seasonal prowess brought by higher quality charms is also stronger. Getting charms is very simple. You just steal them like none other than Bala. <laughs> I have just a supreme get... plus Bala. Let's go. Where can Magister Merlin find charms? Through the brand new seasonal battle mode, Dura's Trial. Wow. Tales have it that wow. Dura has a deep history with Asperia. Yet, I haven't found more information about this lost past. If you know anything, please tell me. Oh, back to this new seasonal mode. Dura's Trial is an all-new PvE mode where you'll find quite a few charm resources. Each tower has its own progress, and you'll get random rewards each time you pass a floor. There we go, boys. That's what we call the, uh, the thumbnail. Includes charms for all heroes. Clearing all floors will also provide additional rewards. Charms obtained in Dura's Trial provide heroes seasonal prowess, a progression that is easy to manage on a seasonal basis. Okay, that's good. Speaking of new seasons, the timing of Magister Merlin's departure... I'm a big fan of permanent content. Even if you have a season with seasonal things, I think it should bring a lot to the game in terms of what stays after the season is gone. So I'm really excited to see what they do with that. Or I'm really nervous, I'd say is probably actually a better term. I'm pretty nervous to see how they go about that and what they're going to be keeping in the game permanently. Um, I'm sure since she just said that Dura's Trials are like, you know, a whole different game mode in a good place to get what you need for the season. Hopefully that like, you know, if I want to get seasonal stuff, I go to Dura's Trials. If I want to do the permanent stuff, I do other things. And then maybe if they're going to add a Dream Realm boss, I really, really hope they do. I thought they said they were going to. Whatever Dream Realm they add into the game, I hope it stays as like a fifth permanent boss in the rotation of bosses. Um, I think that would just be really cool. Um, yeah. Sure varies in Asperia. In order to make each journey full of fun, each new season will provide a new experience. One of them is the newly added seasonal skill system this season. Seasonal skill is new content for every new season. In the long run, each new season will bring along new seasonal skill and a different level up experience. When the hero okay. season level reaches 51, seasonal skill will be unlocked and its level will gradually increase with the season level. At the end of the season, all season levels will be cleared and converted into essence used for upgrading resonance synergy. Thank you. Oh my god. Thank you. That is such good news. Okay, that is such good news because it, that's basically what I just said. But right like I mean, I was more talking about content itself, but at least if like the progress you make in the game, like your seasonal items, your seasonal experience, things like that. If it all, if you just grind for it really hard and like you get all this stuff during a season and then in one patch someday, it just goes away for them to add stuff for the next season and like all your progress or, or like everything you did all the time you spent on doing stuff in that season is just gone instantly with nothing to see for it. That would really suck. But the fact that they're going to be like, oh, okay, depending on like what you got in this season, we're going to give you some essence and essence is one of the biggest bottleneck resources in the entire game. So hopefully it is a decent amount and seasons are just where people, you know, you go, you experience a season for a little bit, uh, for like a month or two or however long seasons are going to last. And then whenever it's removed, you see a big reward that adds a lot of, you know, permanent progression to your account. You know, it, it adds something big to your account. It allows you to, upgrade your units a lot more than you would have if you never did that seasonal content during that time. That's what I like to see. 
to welcome Magister Merlin, who arrives in Hesperia at different timings, certain seasonal prog- Okay. This is big. So, AFK stages, cool. Dream Realm, cool. Arena, cool. Duras Trials, that's the new mode that specifically gives you uh, the the gear for the heroes, or whatever they're called, the uh, the charms on the heroes. Uh, looks like you have maybe five runs a day, and you'll probably have some like resets that you can like pay gems for or something, just like Arena. Uh, but I don't know. <clears throat> Looks like you have five tokens a day to spend on that. And then you have three tries at the Supreme Arena, which is basically three teams. Uh, it's like Tag Team Arena from Raid Shadow Legends, if you've ever played that. Uh, Legend Trial looks exactly the same. And then Honor Duel looks exactly the same. Arcane Labyrinth looks the same. Um, but it does say new down there. So hopefully that's not just like the person's screen. Or maybe they added some new floors or something. I don't know. Um, I'm hoping that they. Uh, give a little bit of a buff, uh, give a decent buff to the uh, Honor Duel, not the Honor Duel, um, the weekly Arcane Labyrinth rewards. Um, I think that they are extremely lacking. Like, Honor Duel, Arena, like, every single place in the entire game hard, hard outshines the amount of uh, rewards you get for doing Arcane Labyrinth. I think it's, it's honestly laughable. The rewards you get. Progressions will be refreshed that mode. every season. In addition, a brand new event, Supreme Arena, will open every Wednesday to Sunday. This is a cross-server caliber clash event. That's huge. Okay, so it's only on certain days. So this isn't going to be a part of your daily grind rotation every single day. It's going to be a climb that you do over a few days, and then you have a few days cooldown. It's kind of like battle drills. I like that. I like that, genuinely. So yeah, I'm looking for like the time limit, but it looks like, okay, so this person has max gold. Okay, resonance level four, or level 240. I think you have to make it to 240 to participate in season content. Um, I'm looking for like anything else. Daily rewards, 140 gems, that's it? That's kind of Bodhi, hopefully that's like, all those spots get filled, but it's kind of weird that there's four spots and only one of them is taken. Maybe it's because, like, they haven't played a single round of it, like the screenshot was taken before that. Um, In we'll addition, see. a brand new event, Supreme Arena, will open every Wednesday to Sunday. I do like this. This is a cross-server caliber clash event. Yep. Magister Merlin cool. can challenge the higher-ranked Magisters across all of Asperia in this best-of-three multi-team mode. Oh! See, that is so cool. That is cool. So the way it's done in uh, AFK, or uh, the way it's done in Raid Shadow Legends, I don't know if this is an AFK arena. I didn't play AFK arena. I don't have that to reference it to. But the way this is done in Raid Shadow Legends is when you win a battle in AFK arena, or in the tag team arena, which is what this is, three teams, uh, you, you get some trophies, which is like, trophies are like, the amount of them you have depends on, you know, is what rank you are. Uh, so whenever you win, you get some points. Whenever you lose, you lose some points. And then if you win another one, you get some points. But that would be really cool if it's just straight up. Whoever wins the most, like you could either 2-0 somebody. That would be cool. If you can 2-0 and then you don't even have to do the third battle, that would be really nice. Um, because I think that would make it so that like that would make sense right because if it is a best of three then the third match literally does not matter whether you win or lose if you've already won the first two or you've already lost the first two um but that would cause people to front load like their best team is the first one their second best team is the second one and their worst team is the third one which i think would create the best competition rather than artificially having to like um move your character like artificially have to be like okay this would be the best team comp but my i can't have like all my best characters in one team i have to like spread them out artificially even though i don't want to because like it's this dumb system now i would rather have it like if you win the first one you win the second one and then you don't have to do the third one that way it, it seems more fair that way because every time you play against somebody if your best team is your first one, 
their best team is their first one and you get like the highest quality match there and then it also equalizes the quality of the other two matches um but also you could counter that by being like okay usually people are going to put their best team number one i'm going to put my best team number two and then my second best team number three that way if they win the first one with their super strong members against my weak members uh, let their super strong team against my weak team I can reverse sweep them. That actually, that's okay. Okay, uh, I'm a genius, bro. I'm a genius. I fucking I love my idea. All right, not biased at all. Arena, the stage of the defensive side changes regularly. For example, some stages contain asymmetrical layouts or even tiles that can hide heroes, which is very interesting. The winner takes all, and not winning is okay because there's no penalty here. Finally, the new season will also bring along new artifacts. But what exactly are they? And how will Magister Merlin acquire them? So much to uncover in this season! The Song of Strife season is arriving in the land of Hesperia. Magister Merlin and companions will discover- Okay, I'm kind of getting worried that there's not going to be a new Primal Lord. I really thought there was going to be a new Primal Lord. That's the what- that's basically, I watched a few YouTube videos and that's what people were kind of saying that the prediction was, that there was going to be a new Primal Lord. But now it's looking like, if we haven't heard anything about it now, it's kind of sus, so. We'll see. I think if it's the same four bosses till the end of time, that's going to get kind of boring. I want a new big Primal Lord. That way, uh, once or twice a week, whatever it is because it's not going to be even because it'd be five rotating throughout a week. So some weeks it would happen twice. Um, you know, once or twice a week getting like a new challenge that I'm not used to because we've, you know, so far only had these four bosses in that has like a new mechanic that you might need a different team for. That would be cool, but I'm kind of getting worried. And form new bonds with Uru clan. Through charms obtained from Dura's trial and a variety of new seasonal skill, the new season is bringing new powers to all heroes. The new song of- Is this separate? Like, please say that that's separate from normal gear. Like, because this does look seasonal like skill. just the basic gear screen, except for like, it has Song of Strife up here. The new I really hope it doesn't reset all of my gear. That would be crazy is bringing new powers to all heroes the new song of strife season will be available 42 days after the initial creation of each server the earliest available date being may 10th what kind of unknowns and challenges will magister merlin now my server is going to be a little bit behind that i'm on server like i think 320 something encounter it's so very exciting ah, the drinks and snacks are ready Timing is just right. Come and have a try, and let me know how they taste, all right? You bet! Wow, guys, there's another code. Two-thirds of a pull. Two-thirds of a single pull. That's crazy. All right, that's the whole video. Um, I'm a little worried about a, a, a few things, and those things I have mentioned being Primal Lord. Um, seems like that's going to kind of really stagnate uh, during the season if, you know, they don't surprise us with something that they literally did not say in this whole video. Um, the new characters are cool. Um, the season stuff looks cool. I like the way that the, the tag team battles or the, the Supreme Arena or whatever it is, is not going to be every single day of the week. Um, It'll be like an event kind of thing where it's a few days. Uh, do as what do as good as you can. You get rewards at the end of those days. Uh, that's pretty cool. Um, it doesn't look like they added anything to guilds. Maybe that's something that they just didn't want to disclose. Maybe there maybe there are going to be surprises in the patch notes. Um, what else was I worried about? Uh, gear replace it like seasonal gear, just fully replacing normal gear. Uh, because that screen looked very similar and I didn't see anywhere to like switch between your regular and seasonal gear to like equip, you know, to, like upgrade your regular gear while you also have seasonal gear. That seemed pretty 
uh odd. Um what else? I mean the, the new zone looks cool. Like I said, the new characters look cool. Uh, the new challenges look cool. Overall, I would say this is probably a positive to the game. We're gonna have to see how it goes. Um But yeah. Uh thank you all for watching. If you like the video, like it. If you dislike it, dislike it. Uh subscribe for more content. Um, I would like to see more of the content that's on my screen right now. And uh <laughs> um yeah, have a wonderful day.